I think you said that uh, getting them in the vehicle uh, was interesting or difficult. There was some difficult. Yeah, they, well, that's when they started. Um, that was the first time they got a look at me, and because the dome light came on, I guess, and they were, you know, they were both checking me out, <laughs> like trying to figure out so what I was going on. Yeah, and so they were. So then, after they saw saw my, I, I mean, I had a mask on, but um, I had a mask and my, the hood of my jacket on, but they would. Uh, there's, you know, they started trying to talk to me and stuff, and try to personalize it. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I mean, I was, I, I would go along with it a little bit because it seemed like it was, like the guy he was he used to be in the same unit in the army that I was in, he was Twenty Fifth Infantry Division or something. No kidding. Yeah, I found I found one of his insignia patches when I was going through their dresser, and I was asking him about it. Anyway, yeah, I was just I was just bullshitting them, and they were, um, you know, they of course wanted to know what, why why I was we were leaving in the car. Uh, yeah. What'd you tell them? No, I just told them it was a it was a kidnap for ransom set up, and that there were other people involved in it. So. Did you take the? the uh, laundry clothing and stuff to make it look like maybe they had gone on a trip? Is that part of the reason? Well, was I was thinking that might... I, I wasn't really thinking... I, I was, that was part of my thinking, but I, I wasn't doing it for that reason, really, because uh, I knew that with the broken window and the cut phone lines, the police would know that it was yeah. pretty unlikely that someone would do that, make it look like they got kidnapped and disappeared. <laughs> So I, the main reason I took the suitcases was because uh, I only had a small backpack with me and I wanted to keep all of their stuff separate from my stuff. I had a lot of stuff in the backpack that I had with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, yeah, everything I kept, I took from their house. I wanted to keep separate so I could go through it later. And, and uh, her hands were behind her back. I had cable ties on them, and I think I had cable ties on her feet too. And once I had her in, once I had him in there, and he was uh, he was kind of overweight and he wasn't in very good health, so I wasn't that worried about him. But I had his hands uh, cable tied, and then I had a seatbelt on him too. And um, he was he in the back? Yeah, he was in the back on the passenger side, and. <clears throat> and uh, like I say, they were wondering what was going on. So I, I don't know. I, I guess I just, I just told them a story that I thought was somewhat believable, so they wouldn't freak out on the way out there. Told them they were. T I was taking them to a, to a drop house, and there were other people that were going to meet us there, and uh, they were convinced that I had their own people, and you know that they didn't. I think they thought it was a case of mistaken identity or something. They thought that they were... Because I was asking them about uh, drugs, too, when I was in the house. And uh, took all their prescri prescription. There was, like, some Percocets and Vicodin and stuff like that. But there weren't, there weren't any illegal drugs that I found. And so I had all that stuff in, in the suitcase. So I think they thought that it was related to something to that. And... Uh, so we were driving out to the house, and and she started talking about, um, you know, I should I should start screaming or I should start doing something. And I told her I said you're just gonna piss me off because there's nobody around to help you. It was like it was probably about one or two a.m. at that time. And um, that's about when you left the house. You think one or two? Yeah, I think I think so. I don't. I remember I looked at the clock in the kitchen, but I don't remember what time it said. It was late, because uh, I know that guy was out, the neighbor was out smoking and stuff until about midnight or maybe a little later. And um, and then I had I already had my backpack with me. It had, uh, had a bunch of stuff in it. I had... Uh, 
like a propane burner camp stove thing and a pan for boiling water and uh, had a few like water bottles, Perrier bottles that had uh, water in them and had a coil, like a 50 foot coil of uh, nylon rope duct tape uh, latex gloves um, I guess you'd call it a rape kit that's what it mostly was and uh, so I had all that stuff in the bag with me and after I had him in the car I drove to the hotel where my car was parked my car was parked off to the side kind of in a dark area of the parking lot and I backed their car in right alongside my car and I hadn't decided for sure at that point what to do with their bodies so I threw a bunch of stuff out of my car into into their car trunk I had a shovel um, I had uh, some diesel I had a big roll of the 55 gallon trash bags and the uh, Drano, I threw that in their trunk. So, yeah, I, had, I threw all that stuff in their trunk and uh, went out to started driving out to the house. There wasn't. It was really late. There wasn't anybody on the roads or anything.